Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Cloudy Vape. Alright, in this episode, I have a guest today. He usually just hangs out with me while I'm using my computer, so today he's hanging out with us. Alright, in this video we're going to be doing a dual coil build on this Tugboat clone. Alright, a few things to mention before I start this video. I just want to let you know this is a sub-ohm build, so if you are not familiar with building sub-ohm, please take caution and only experienced people should be trying these sub-ohm builds and always use the best batteries you possibly can get. A high drain battery is always the best and just always be safe. So I hope you find this video helpful and if you need help with this, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll help you with this build. All right, let's start building. All right, here's this tugboat. It's a 1-1 clone by Tobacco. I have it on my Nemesis clone right now. Pretty much we're just gonna be building the uh, same exact build that's already in it. This is pretty much my main build I'll always do on this tugboat. This is a dual coil eight wrap with 24 gauge Canthal using a 330 seconds drill bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apart, clean it out, and then we're gonna build on it. Okay, so here's the RDA all stripped down and ready to build on. All right, things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a 330 seconds drill bit, some 24 gauge Canthal, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, and you're either gonna need a lighter or a blowtorch. Now, as you can see, I have this screwdriver. It has a nice long handle on it for more leverage. It is the same diameter as the uh, 330 second strobe bit. I like using this just because I can hold on to it, get a better grip while I wrap the coils around this. All right, you're gonna need two pieces of at least six to eight inches of Canthal. So let's get our drill bit or our screwdriver and let's start wrapping. I'll always wrap over and then under like this. You can wrap it either way. You just wanna make sure um, when you're doing a dual coil build, always make the, the wraps exactly the same. So on your next coil, make sure however you did it on this one, you do it exactly the same. All right, so let's start this coil. You can hold your screwdriver in whichever hand you'd like and then just go over on the coil. Make that first lead go over on top and then tuck it under and then just give it a nice pinch. It should look like that. And then let's just take the smaller lead and flip it around. So we have a nice tight first two wraps right there. See right there you have your first two wraps and then you just want to snug it tight. You can either push it up against here, um, but if you're using a drill bit, just get a nice firm grip on that smaller lead right here. Keep your hand on this longer lead. And then you just want to count eight on top. So let's start this. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure the leads are straight down, lined up. And then if you're using a drill bit or um, a screwdriver, go ahead and just push that up against there to tighten up those coils like that, to snug them up. So there you have it, there's your first coil. All right, so I'm not gonna show you how to do a second coil. Pretty much just make two duplicate coils and then let's heat them up. All right, so let's heat up these coils. Uh, make sure you have a pair of tweezers on hand or a pair of needle nose pliers, that'll work also. Now just make sure you hold on tight to this. Keep your fingers away from the coil, of course, and just fire it up until it's red hot. Now what you wanna quickly do is grab this needle nose pliers or tweezers while it's still hot, just give it a pinch. Pinch it snug. You can either do 
one heat up, two heat ups, whatever you want. Just do it until you get it nice and tight together like this. This is what your end result should look like. You should have two coils identically wrapped the same, heated up and tightened up nicely. All right, before you insert the coils, let's look at these leads. You want the leads to be about an inch or two inches, just enough to work with them while you're putting them inside of the RDA. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this longer lead to about the size of this lead. Now let's go ahead and get your tugboat. Make sure that the screws are unscrewed before you try to stuff the uh, leads in there. You can pick whatever side you like. So just go ahead and grab a coil and let's uh, feed in the two leads. One into the negative and then one into the positive. Now let's go ahead and insert that other coil on the opposite side. If you see close on this positive lead, you want to pull it to the side and you want to put that other positive lead on the new coil you're putting in. You want to put it right to the side of it. Uh, you don't want them twisted up. It just makes it easier when you're cutting the final leads. So let's just pull this to the side, bend it a little bit. Then as you see, as you put it in, you want it to be just right to the side of it. So once you have your two coils in, it should look like this. You want to make sure that those two positive leads are on their respective sides. Usually what I do if I want to try to center these coils right in the center of the RDA, I'll, uh, I'll leave the screws loose and then I'll grab my screwdriver and I'll go ahead and insert them into the coils and I'll kind of position them where I want them to go. So the first thing to do, uh, depending on how you built your coil, it's going to be angled um, one way or the other depending on where the lead is sitting. So first thing to do is just place the screwdriver or the drill bit inside of the coil and just pull it up a little bit so it's nice and straight like that. And then you want to take that second one, pull it up so it's straight like that. Now just doing that, that just bends the wire up so you have a little bit more wiggle room to center them. Now what you need to do is you need to insert the drill bit from this side of the coils, so this side and this side. So inserting it this way, right up to the base, and it's a lot easier with this screwdriver because you can get right to the edge of the coil. And then what you want to do is literally just push. Pull that out a little bit. Push to the side. You can't really get it centered just because of that post being in the centered. But I like to just move it over a little bit. And then what I'll do, once I get it about where I want. Let's say about right there. I'll put my finger down on this. I'll grab my screwdriver and let's tighten this negative post, the one that the coil is attached to. All right, let's turn it around. And as you can see, I lost my screw right here. So let me grab that screw real quick. All right, I got that screw back in there. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We wanna push on that coil we want to get it as centered as we can. Again, get it to where you want, and then just put some pressure down on it like that. And then again, we're gonna tighten that negative lead right here. So now you want to look at, look at it straight up. They're about the good even distance between the two. And now let's tighten down the positive post. All 
All right, they're about where I want them. I want them to be sitting a little bit higher. Um, right there, I want them sitting a little bit higher, so I'm just gonna pull up just a little bit. I'll turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I just want that pulled up a little bit. I want them just slightly higher than the, uh, the post right here. The reason I'm doing that, the air flows on the top cap are about that high and I would rather have the air coming under the coil than above it or directly on it. Um, having the air come under the coil, uh, it helps with more flavor, especially in something like the tugboat. Alright, there we are. Now what we need to do is cut these leads. I usually just cut these leads with uh, fingernail clippers. So let's cut it right at the base of this post. Then the easiest thing is to cut these positive posts to cut them, just bend them the opposite ways. That way you can dig down in there and cut them. Let's have a look, and that's about how I want it. I want enough room on each side um, to put some cotton, to drop the cotton down. Uh, I didn't want them to be justified so far to the left or the right, um, and I don't want them directly center because that'll bend the wire too much. I just want a little bend on it. So there you go. That is what it should look like when you're done. Now, unfortunately, my ohm reader died on me but I've built this so much that I know it's gonna be a 0.32. Um, that way I really don't need an ohm reader for this build. As long as I know that the contacts are being made on these posts, I don't really need an ohm reader for this one, but this will sit at a 0.32. All right, go ahead and screw it on the mod of your choice. Uh, I'm gonna be using this Nemesis clone. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see how those coils fire up. As you can see, it's lighting up from the inside out. That's perfect. I didn't need to do any crimping after I fired them up, which is awesome. That's why you really want to cook the coils before you put them in the RDA. It always helps, especially when you're trying to balance out the heat. I know in the past I've put these in before I fired them up and I've tried to um, fire them up with the battery and uh, that just burns your battery and, and technically it's kind of dangerous because you have a lot of hot spots going on and uh, it's doable but I just wouldn't recommend it. So if you can, always fire up your coils before you put them in the RDA and crimp them down. All right, all you're gonna need for this is just a small piece of cotton um, only because the RDA is so small, um, you don't have a lot of room to put cotton. Uh, however, the tugboat well is pretty deep Still, there's not that much room compared to other RDAs. So go ahead and take a small piece, let's say about two to three inches, split it in half, and then go ahead and set one of these aside. Now just slightly roll the cotton together. And on one side, you wanna just create a point, just twist it until you get a point. And remember, this is a 332nd drill bit, so it's a little bit thicker than most things. Uh, it's definitely not an eighth inch, but um, it definitely has some room to put some cotton in. So you want to just create a nice little spike of cotton like that, and then go ahead and grab your tugboat. Go ahead and just insert it in one of the coils. All right, that's all you need. Go ahead and just cut it about right here. Now take that other piece of cotton and again, make a nice little point on one side. And let's insert it into that other coil.
One thing to mention when you're putting cotton in, make sure you wash your hands. Um, if you get the oil from your skin on these cotton swabs, it doesn't really taste too good when you're first firing up the device. You should have two pieces of cotton that look just like this. What you want to do is you want to just cut evenly on each side. So let's cut that about right there and then cut this about right here and about right here. Once you cut your cotton, it should look something like this. Now all you want to do is just take your drill bit or your screwdriver and just turn them around like this. See how you have a gap right there? You want to tuck, a, just fold it under like that and then just push it right in underneath the gap of the coil. And then get your drill bit or your screwdriver and just tuck it right underneath there. Take that second side, hold it right there, and just tuck it underneath there. Now remember, we set these coils higher than the posts. So we have a little bit of room underneath these coils and that's so that when the air comes in it should go underneath that coil and then it should draw from the wick. Now to see what I'm talking about let's go ahead and just set this right next to it. As you can see that airflow hole is going to line up right underneath that coil almost on the bottom. So that's the trick you're going for. You want to have it just slightly underneath it. Still on the coil, but slightly underneath it. All right, next, all you got to do is saturate the cotton. So I'm using uh, Cookies and Cream uh, by Mount Baker. This is a Max VG. Uh, what I like to do is right on the inside of this uh, positive post, I'll just juice it up right there, and then I'll saturate all the, all the wicks around it. And just for the sake of saturating all of it, you can just put one drop on top of each coil just so it saturates inside of the cotton that's inside of the coil. And just dab around the juice. Once you get the cotton nice and saturated, you can go ahead and fire it up and see how it fires up. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, a few things to mention. You want to make sure that the cotton underneath this coil, that there's a little room underneath this coil, a gap. That way the air can come in right there. All right, make sure you line up those coils with the airflow on the top cap. All right, so here's the build. Let's fire it up and talk about it. I'm dripping on the cotton, drip, 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 dripping on the cotton. So much flavor. If you need help with this build, go ahead and leave a comment or send me a private message and I would love to help you with this. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please like it. If you like my videos, please subscribe. And as always, stay classy and keep vaping.